What can you do for students with EBD in your classroom? The most important thing you can do is establish clear rules and make sure students understand the expectations you have for them. Thank you for being here and being on time. Have you Build rapport with your students. Say good morning or hello to them by name. Model appropriate behaviors for students. Find teachable moments throughout the day. For example, before or after school, during transition periods in class, between classes, during lunch, or during breaks. So. Exactly. Nice reframe. Can you, you, can you? I don't know what I just said. I found out. You should write that down to, for you and me. Breaks. It's important that students understand that teachers do not all have the same rules. You may be allowed to chew gum in one classroom, but another teacher may not allow that. Some teachers are inconsistent with expectations and consequences. When a teacher gives a warning, it means that he or she wants the behavior to stop and that a consequence will probably follow the behavior if it happens again. Okay. Brittany. Are we going to be able to share? You are going to be able to share. Yes. Okay. Um, if you would like to attach this to construction paper, Hector, if you'd like to con uh, attach this to... Some slang language may be acceptable around peers, but not adults. Saying please, thank you, and excuse me can go a long way. Also remember, do stay in control. You're ready to start. Yes, just one person on the computer for right now. Now we're going to be switching and there's going to be more rules. Now, the last 20 minutes will be unrestricted, meaning anybody can talk, anybody can be on the computer, however, each time I catch you not obeying the rules, it's going to be one minute you don't get. That's one more minute you have to, yeah, you'll be restricted by something. So as long as you, you follow the rules the whole time, you get the last three minutes where anyone can talk and anyone can be on the computer. Do give the student an opportunity to respond. Don't go back and forth arguing with a disruptive student. Don't glare at the student, stand over them, intimidate or further agitate them. It's important to keep in mind that students should not be able to avoid or escape assigned work by sulking, showing that they are agitated, or trying to delay working. When a student is agitated, don't make demands or initiate contact unless there is an emergency. Sometimes it's helpful to give students one direction at a time. Be specific and direct. All right, go ahead and put your pencils down for just a second. Let me have your attention. I know some of you guys are in the process of finishing this up, so let me go ahead and give you your next step when you are finished with your brainstorming. Make eye contact. Allow time for students to respond. As a rule of thumb, at least 10 seconds. If you think the student is willing, have them write about what is bothering them. As you announce an upcoming transition, remind students of the kind of behavior you are looking for. For example, restate your expectation of moving quietly and slowly without bumping, shoving, or touching others with hands or feet to line up. Uh, what I need for you guys to make sure is that your names are on the back of your page because I think you all the only ones that haven't gotten those. We're going to actually turn these into the tray. <coughs> Excuse me, then you need to go ahead and um, sit quietly for just a minute while Dr. Burrow. Did I say that correctly? Yes, you did. That's Comes correct. back and talks to you guys. I need everybody to sit and give your attention up here, please. Written expressions of authentic praise counter many parents' beliefs that only bad news is sent home from school. Brag about your students. Please note that many of these strategies will work well with all of your students. 